All right. Hello, everyone. I am Ashley Rhoda, your brand strategist. And with me is the amazing Ronnie Bartless, who's your business strategist. And every Thursday, we go live here for you to be a positive resource for you. And we call this our Mimosa Hotline. Now, it all started way back when I think it's been like two years now, right? Almost, yeah. Almost two years. Okay. <clears throat> so, almost two years ago, Ronnie and I had met through the internet and through a mutual community. And um, we were talking in the midst of COVID saying how lonely it was, saying how like there wasn't that opportunity to meet a friend for coffee and do that kind of friend therapy thing, you know, where you chat about the week and ask those things that maybe you're stuck on or celebrate things that you've won. And so we started, um, a mimosa hotline and it kind of came from the fact that Ronnie loves champagne and mm -hmm. I will never say no mm -hmm. and so it it was this like kind of joke but playfulness that we had that we needed like a mimosa hotline like a friend thing that we could call every week and check in on people mm -hmm. and so we started talking every Sunday mm -hmm. and then a few I don't know months back or so we were like you know it's interesting the balance of how much we talk shop and friend, but these are the yeah. types of conversations <clears throat> others need to hear. It's kind of like if you could listen through the wall, what you would hear, in our opinion, the experts talking about. And one thing I really learned this uh, past week, which we'll dive into in a second, but is, and I hope this resonates and isn't offensive, but the lonely leaders, like those of us that are at the top doing our thing, working it out, we're the go-to for everyone. We position ourselves as the authorities. It's kind of lonely. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just, it's, it's a unique uh, detail that I find in all of my clients. And, you know, when I say it to them, they're like, yeah, it's not offensive. It's like, yeah, it is lonely out here, you know? Yeah. Um, trailblazers, thought leaders, innovators, uh, we we pave a different path, if you will. And I think if more of us just kind of were like, hey, are you over here? We might be able to even find community in that um, space. So yeah. um, we're just gonna dive in and do our thing. If those yeah. of you are able to join us live, please say hello in the comments. Those of you joining us on the replay, say hello, hello. Um, I actually think I may have someone live. So I'm gonna mute myself really fast just so I can turn one thing okay. on and be back. But take it over here. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we've called this mimosa hotline for almost two years. I don't know that we've ever had a mimosa. No. Uh, <laughs> problem. I would also like to put into the universe, a champagne sponsor who would like to yes, sponsor please. this, that we yes, please. do tastings for you and, and, um, spotlight you. <laughs> yes. I would happily I'm, be an alcoholic. Um, what do you call that sponsor? Alcohol sponsor? Or alcohol like, sponsor. I would 100% be on board happily. with that. I so, would do that for free. <laughs> Just send but, it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, is there like, is there a job for that? Like, where can I apply for that job? No, there is. I mean, um, um, how do you say that? Cocktail waitresses. And then there's actually like, I mean, um, what are the companies? Bacardi has sponsors where they have like um, ambassadors and things that, yeah. No, it's definitely I meant it was an official taster. Oh, <laughs> I think that's, that's the just a graphic tea we make up immediately after this show <laughs> and self-promote that. And we will take all donations, test all options, <laughs> and we will not complain about it at all. Yeah, no, we will give the public <laughs> what they want to know about which is the best champagne for the money. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Like we, we are here to serve yeah. you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Complimentary. <laughs> I love it. So how was your week? It was fine. I mean, it was a uh, boring to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's not, that's not a bad problem to have. It was uh, because you were out of town. So you were at conference and, um, it was, this is actually an interesting topic because this week was probably one of my like lonely leader weeks because mm -hmm. I was behind my computer most all of the week. Like everybody was out kind of, you know, any partners that I work with are like, were out working and like doing mm -hmm. stuff. So it wasn't like a bunch of meetings. It was people actually like doing the work. So it was one of those weeks that was kind of one of those lonely leader weeks where you're just doing the work yeah, and yeah. nobody around, but other than Lucy down here, 
<laughs> you know, the squirrels. It's true. And then, you know, yeah. what I think is interesting is I, I don't know if my timeline is right. I'm a little out of it since I traveled, but um, wasn't it the prior week that you mentioned was like the crazy week that you had where all the irons in the fire and it was like crazy. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, the, the, the like high, low, high, low, high, low we have in business, you know, some weeks were just like, oh my God, everything's going wrong. Or mm -hmm. like everybody needs something, not wrong, yeah. but someone needs yeah. something. There's and then 15 the next week meetings we're like, on the calendar. What do I do with myself? <laughs> right. and I feel like it's such like a whiplash effect that on the down weeks, you almost feel like, am I going out of business? Is everything okay? Like, what do I need to do? There's something I definitely need to do, right? Like, am I'm I missing okay? something. Yeah, I'm missing something. I am forgetting to do something. Yeah, and that's really what I always think. Have, I'm forgetting something. Yeah, and really, it's those weeks that you're just like, no, things are done. I'm waiting. I'm, I no, and it, it's hard. It's hard for me that yo-yo effect, I guess is mm -hmm. better than whiplash, but the yo-yo effect is interesting. Yeah. Um, and then also sometimes when you're doing the work, uh, like for example, just so everyone knows, I just got home from a women's conference last week and, uh, the first day back, um, as you can tell, maybe I'm still a little hoarse from it. There were 500 people there. I talked nonstop from, I don't, I don't think I'm kidding. Cause my roomie and I, when we woke up at like meh, mm, eh, mm, eight, seven, eight, whatever. Um, we didn't go to bed until like midnight, let alone the last night we were up till 3am talking to a new connection that we had nonstop talking. So, you know, my voice is a little interesting, hopefully still a treat for you, <laughs> but, um, I you went know, to a networking thing and I'm like, I just screamed at people for two hours and I came yeah. home and Alan was like, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? And I'm like, no, I've just been screaming at people. All no, like I've just because been you know the rooms don't loud. talk this much post COVID. So now that yeah. we like are in normal situations, our little voices are like, it's uh -huh. um, but you know, coming home the first day, I just needed an energy day. Mm -hmm. Um, I fully admit I'm an ambivert, which means I, mm -hmm. per, I am at definitely extroverted, but the way I recharge is by myself and in yeah. little dark places, like a little polar bear. I don't know something that hibernates. Mm -hmm. That's me. Um, so I just needed an energy day. Then the yeah. second day, truth be told, I still didn't have a voice. So it wasn't like I could make calls and things. Yeah. Um, and I felt so behind, like I wasn't doing enough um, and I, and I was like, I should be doing more and get all the calls and follow up with all the leads and do all of this. But I also had this awareness that day of let the magic sit and simmer kind of like a, Hey there, welcome, welcome. Kind of like a, a cup of tea. I know this sounds really weird, but I had this epiphany while I was making my tea this morning, just like tea. When you pour in the water, you got to let it sit and brew and mm -hmm. then you can drink it and enjoy it. And I was thinking all of those connections, all of those conversations needed to sit and brew in the minds of the people that I had done that with. And then come Wednesday, I'm thinking, Oh my God, I'm so glad I waited because if you were the eager beaver on Monday, like how right. obnoxious and annoying would that be? So like yeah. no one wanted to hear from me as much as I wasn't ready. So right. then sending out the messages, I feel like I got really great responses. People were talking to me and like excited and all the things. Um, and it was just one of those, again, maybe not lonely leaders, observant leaders, maybe of just, yeah. there is, it is, there's, we are working when we're thinking. We're working mm -hmm. when we're driving, just thinking, you know, mm -hmm. we're working when we're pausing and letting the magic kind of take place into the actions that we've taken, you know? Yeah. When you're an entrepreneur, it's like a thinking job, right? <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I mean it's so true. That was so good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thinking job. And I mean, there's so many days, like, yeah, sure. We do meetings and we have to talk all the time, like all of those things, but even okay. in between all of that, we're thinking like we're in job, like, it's not like we make a physical thing. I mean, some people do, but even if you do make a physical thing, you've got to be thinking about it and how you're going to sell it. Like all of those things that go with a business. And so it's like the ongoing, like argument every evening in our house where I'm like, what do you want for dinner? And he's like, I don't care. And I'm like, I don't either. I have made so many decisions today. This is one I just don't care to make. <laughs> I need you to tell me what to do. <laughs> no, just don't ask me that. Like yeah. I don't want to, what's for breakfast, lunch, dinner, any meal, just don't ask me. I, that is actually like a pet peeve. I've started realizing. However, can I just say, and Ronnie, you may totally out me on this. I don't cook. I chop. 
Okay. This is like my way of life. I don't cook. I chop. So I have just been making this week the most amazing uh lemon and parmesan salad and i am addicted mm. to it mm. oh my gosh i like i realized like okay i might not be a chef but man am i a sous chef and man do i love my little chopping experiments because <laughs> i've got pine nuts which are so buttery i've got pine nuts. nuts i've got the avocado i've got the parmesan i am rocking i am a good um sauce maker like that's one yeah. thing dressings and things i don't know how but yeah. i just and i i'm a good mixologist on it okay. oh my god it's so yummy right now <laughs> and if that, that like if somebody was like what's for lunch then i like no but um yeah pinterest actually dedicates my okay. weekly meals like i go on to pinterest and i look for recipes yeah. and i'm just like i could that's eat right. that all week long sure yeah but oh my gosh yeah i we I, might need that recipe in the show sure. notes yeah <laughs> So easy and that's the other thing i love so the dressing is olive oil um mm -hmm. uh lemon juice mm -hmm. and then what i really spiced it up with instead of they recommended just pepper i've been using mm -hmm. lemon pepper yeah okay and, yeah it's a double oh down my. on the lemon yeah mm, so good so good and i was like oh she got it she can do it yeah i know i mean yeah well oh, you, you're even afraid to boil water uh-huh yeah, <laughs> i could afraid to yeah. turn on this stove like this stove and i i don't know i need to sage it something but i feel like it's a bomb i just i don't know what it is every time i walk up i am just like if i turn it on it will explode it's never done anything to me it hasn't <laughs> i don't know i i just want someone else here if it's gonna go like <laughs> <laughs> I might cook for somebody, but like, I, ooh, yeah. Speaking uh, of lonely, these are the irrational fears we have when we're lonely. I know. I just, I do. I even do that with my business. I have these irrational fears of my business because, like, of lonely. Absolutely. You know, like nobody is ever gonna like talk to me or buy for no, me or for anything no. again. Never. Like that's an irrational oh. fear. Yeah, absolutely. Or like. uh, just the imposter syndromes, the perfectionism syndromes, the um, overachiever. I think both of us, I want to call us both out on this. We are high achievers. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a video sent to me about um, the interest. Okay. So little context really fast. So this woman gave a Ted talk and uh, she talked about something to the effect of like the introverted high achiever and how mm -hmm. when she left corporate and there was no more restraint on her anymore, what happened was because there was limitless possibility for her greatness, she mm -hmm. almost caused an issue by that because not being limited by other things, which she could just achieve and do and get mm -hmm. having infinite potential for it. Actually, this isn't the right journal. I would get it for us, but she made a beautiful quote about like, the the weight of possibility as a high achiever that you know our greatness keeps growing and keeps being defined so how do we truly define success and how do we truly know we're on the right track mm -hmm. and it was it was just fascinating I, i'm not doing it justice but i do promise i'll put that quote in the um show notes at the end because it was interesting to see and think of um but yeah, as high achievers, that's its own DSM diagnostic, you know, uh -huh. like, um, what, and, and let's just say that what is enough? Yeah. Well, how and yeah, I mean, well, and how do you like, really, what is success? Like, I mean, and perfectionism, like there is no such thing. Like these are all concepts made in our own heads. And, mm -hmm. um, I got distracted by the cat. I know. I, I knew it was going to happen. I was like, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say anyway. And, um, no, we were talking about what is enough and defining yeah. success and being a perfectionist. I oh, think yeah. I was going to go along the lines of yet, yeah, like being a high achiever and kind of that infinite capability that we all, that we have, but then on top of it being an empath oh, and highly sensitive to things mm -hmm. that then like, so it's like this compounded, like almost paralyzing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. infinity of I, I could do all of these things and I would want to do all of these things and mm -hmm. like that sounds so exciting but then you get paralyzed with the overwhelm and then you're highly sensitive to everything too so then it's just this compounding on top of each other that just makes you like stall like you kind of get in that point where you're just 
I can't make a decision because I'm so overwhelmed. Absolutely. I felt that this week. So I like to mm. phrase it like this. Um, I have superhuman ambition and mm. human capacity. Mm -hmm. That is my problem. I got yeah. home and there's so many things I can do and want to do, but it almost be, it, it is, it's overwhelming. And I, I was telling somebody, I feel like I have a foot on the gas and a foot on the brake and like, like I'm going and I'm stopping at the same time. Yeah. And I just I, looked at my task list and there are 12 things on it and I'm probably only going to accomplish three. That's my human capacity to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Like it, it's wild. And then I over and over, how many times have you heard this? Uh, pick the top three things you have to do before you go to bed, make them mandatory. You know what? Some days I don't know what should be the top three because right. they all need to get done or they all feel right. like it's a thing. And I know right now, as we keep, you know, following me through this move to Chicago, I, I came home struggling because here I have, you know, I don't think I'm lying. I think I had 15 to 20 solid connections or leads mm -hmm. to follow up on. At the same time, I need to be apartment hunting and like getting all this stuff packed and getting going. And it's like, oh, and then thankfully one of the new um, humans I've met, shout out to Martha Knees. Uh, she was like, girl, I get it. You're okay. Like make sure you're blocking half days, half days you're working on your business, half days you're working on your life. Now, could I have thought of that? Absolutely. But the blessing was having someone like a Ronnie or a Martha or somebody that just is like, that girlfriend, the whole purpose of Mimosa yeah. Hotline to be like, okay, girl, you're spinning out, like do this. And then all right. of a sudden you get full clarity. You can move forward. But until then you're like foot on gas, foot on brake. <laughs> like, yeah. It's hard. It's and, hard. It's overwhelming. And it's so easy to give the advice to everyone else, but yeah. also sometimes so hard to do it for ourselves. And I have mm -hmm. not been able to find a way to coach myself. Um, yeah. cause I do know I give great advice, but like one thing I had thought of is like, maybe I write my, my overwhelmed thoughts in a journal. And then the next day I read it and see if I get perspective, but that's too late. I need it now. Like, yeah. So that, that is the part of the lonely leader that I would love for us to to call in and attract more of so that we don't feel that way that we're like, oh my gosh, like we could reach out to Ashley or R Ronnie or Leilani hashtag another bestie in the group. Um, all the things that God, I feel blessed having both of you. Like it's wild. Yeah. I mean, I think that we all need that kind of community. So like, I mean, we've talked about this so many times, like you and I met through a community that's kind of like, like unofficial community. Right. Um, but which I think are very important to be a part of those because that's how you meet new people. Absolutely. But I feel like for, for me, and I'll speak for myself in this, my community of like very close friends that kind of know me as a business person, but then also kind of know me outside of that as well are more important to me than anything else. 100% the inner um, circle. Yeah. And it takes I mean, a lot to get in there. And I know everybody wants this. So let's also just say that it takes time. Like you're going to find yeah. these people and like slowly groom them and see if they're worthy of being in that inner circle. Um, Cause I, I'm not going to lie. Not everybody gets in there for me. I know it took uh, both you and Leilani breaking me open that it, mm -hmm. I, you know, I learned this, but um, yeah, it's smaller. It's definitely smaller. Yeah. And I find those smaller, and I am also, this is a little bit just part of who I am. I don't do well in big groups anyway. Like, no. and well, you know, you get these programs and they're like, oh, it's only 20 people. So it's a small group. And I'm like, oh, 20 still a little too big for me. Cause I get very lost. Like I get, there's so many voices I have, and I'm highly sensitive in that way that it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. And then I tend to shrink because I feel like I can't speak up because there are so many prominent voices because we're all the same. Right. Definitely. So I get that. I, you know, it's even when they're like small group for me, it's really like a small group for me needs to be like three, four people max. Absolutely. And that's when I really get good benefit because <laughs> I one get to hear other people's voices, but I also get to share mine as well. Right. I you like know, that. so that makes it very beneficial for me. Definitely. We had that in that uh, persona collective I had, I had for us, that group think yeah. tank was really fun. I, I loved that part. Um, yeah. I need to bring that back. Actually, that's on my to-do list. <laughs> Speaking of a fun little side note, one thing that I love, Shamika Tankerson, shout out Shamika Tankerson said, it's not a to-do list. It's a to-done list. I was like, yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> so I'm definitely, I, I changed that this morning on my 
task list. It's now called the to done list, but I called it the ta da list because <laughs> see, I like to da better. I like to da because I was like, I don't know that it's going to get done, but when I but, do it, ta -da! <laughs> exactly. Wow, here we are. <laughs> I know. Um, let's so, see. I was going to ask you um, about conference. Like we we touched on a little bit, but I wanted I want to know like how did it go? Because I'm sure there are like a ton of people out there in the business world that kind of go through this. Of, like, should I go to a conference? Or I just came from a conference. How like how do how does this play in our business? So like I was curious for you. One, how did it go? Mm -hmm. And two, like what was your strategy going in to kind of like what your goal was? Did you did you even have one? Like, yeah. and then now hindsight, like how did you do did that? It, did did you change that? Like how did, yeah. How did, yeah. how did it kind of all go down for you? Oh man. So, so much to talk about. Um, okay. So, uh, context, I went to the e-women network conference that is held at annually. It is my seventh year of attending. I'll give you my background with the company in a moment, but it's held in Dallas, Texas every year in the middle of August. Hot, 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 hot. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Inside, this is kind of funny. We all take jackets. Mm -hmm. The AC is so cold. This <laughs> year, they had um, actually the fire crew came, very sexy, because the entire building was like evacuated because of the AC. The thermostat got disconnected, so they couldn't read how cold it was. If I tell you how cold it was, Chicago has nothing on me because it was so cold. We were freezing our little booties off, and uh, it was very interesting. But let's get back to the beginning. Okay. So eWomen Network is a women's organization for entrepreneurial women. And the whole context is their mantra, their mission is 1 million women making $1 million in revenue or more a year. So that's kind of what we're all achieving for. Mm -hmm. I was first brought in um, 2015. Uh, so I was what they call an emerging leader. So I was between the age range of 22 and 29, making a noticeable impact on my community and they awarded me for it. And that award was a grant of one year membership mm -hmm. flown out to conference and highlighted on stage as the emerging leader. So you kind of get a little bit more attention, I would say, um, just that year. So the first year I was there, um, I was brand new to business. So everything was new. Everything mm -hmm. was like a gold mine. So there was a lot. I mean, I took note after note after note. Um, and I remember the one thing that really stood out that very first year was a woman asked me in the hallway and there I am all confident trying to be me, you know, doing my thing. Well, do you have everything you need for the success that you want? I was like, damn girl, we're in a hallway. Like I, whoa. And I was like, of course I do. Cause what are you going to say? No. And just blubber yourself there. So it's kind of intense. So that's the intensity of this now come full circle. I was a member for five years. I actually was a managing director, which is like a chapter lead here in mm -hmm. Portland for a year, the year of 2020, not the easiest year, if I can say so. Yeah. Um, and I've been exposed to all of the layers, all in uh, the front being a member, the back being one of their staff and employee, if you will, and just all of the things. Then this year, um, to say kind of my strategy and my my idea of it. So with conferences, um, it's a lot. Like, I, I just want to say it's a lot um, mm -hmm. of everything. So there's a lot of peopling. There's a lot of connections. There's a lot of anticipation. There's a lot of hopes. There's a lot of, there's just a lot, right? So I'm lucky being an ambivert that I just really turn on the extroverted side and then make times to find my introvert recharge throughout mm -hmm. the week. And I tell everyone, uh, Leilani and I, that's actually how we met last year. We were standing in line at um, registration and we were about three people apart. And we kind of poked our heads out. She was from Portland. I was from Portland. So we, we kind of met. And then it was kind of love at first sight, if I'm honest. Uh, she's fabulous. And she's now the other half of my besties. I have Ronnie and I have Leilani. So those are my besties. Um, but I told her to pace yourself. These women do like to drink. They're away from home. They're having fun. So liquor is always flowing. And I'm talking from like gray goose bottles to just wine at the happy hour. Like it's everywhere. Right. So pace yourself. Number two is make sure you get sleep because even though you're talking to everybody, like you've got six days you're on on like business on, which we all know what that is. So it's exhausting. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, okay. Uh, um, conference. So one of the strategies I like to talk about, and then I'll tell you my, my goals and what I got out of it is 
with Leilani, I'm gonna use her because this is one of her favorite stories to tell and also one that I like to share. Leilani, the very first night we were there at conference. So this is pre-conference. It's a five-day thing, three days are conference, pre-conference and travel home day. Um, I didn't know her very well, but uh, she kind of like, you know, kind of was attracted to me and wanted to like, and meeting like friends, guys, by the way, I've got to clear the air because the other day I said my girlfriend was meeting me at an event and everyone thought I was gay, which I super support LGBTQ, but I am still straight. So if I say I love somebody, I mean, like, I just love them, not like a thing. Anyways, I don't need a full like online romance going on with Leilani. We are just friends. Anyways. Okay. So she kind of was loving on me and it was fun. So we were hanging out and she comes over and she's like, oh my God, I've given out so many business cards today. And I was like, oh, that's so great. And she's like, what I miss? And I was like, well, you've given out all these amazing cards, but when you get home, who are you going to call? What mm -hmm. cards did you collect? And she was like, oh, so the next day we do the same thing. We're in the event, we do the whole thing. And at happy hour, she comes back to me and she's like, look, and she like fans out all the cards that she got. And I was like, good job. That's excellent. And I said, the next day, I want you to just focus. Don't take everybody's card. Take the right cards. And whether you sort them in your own way, you have pockets. I do this in my bag. I have a yes and a no pocket. They don't need to know. It's not offensive. I'm still going to connect. But my ideal person versus a connection, there's not bad. We should all have this standard of who's your right. perfect strategic partner, ideal client, connection, COI, center of influence. And then who are the people that you met? But maybe it's not in that category, but you can stay connected because everyone has value for you. But that was a thing. So the next day she comes back and it's a little fan and she's got her like five. And I was like, mm -hmm. there we go. So mm -hmm. that when I say, you know, what is the value? You asked me, what's the value of going to conferences? It is just, um, a qual quantity thing. It's just an opportunity in a dense amount of time to meet a ton of people, learn your ideals, like your perfect person, your perfect client, your perfect uh, strategic partner, get to know them. I would mm -hmm. say the first year, it's just qualifying people. Years later, um, it's uh, reinforcing relationships. So I've been with these women for seven years now, you know, the first couple of years, no one knew me this year, Leilani, who it's her second year versus my mm -hmm. seventh year, seventh is, um, people come up to me, Hey, Ashley, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like all these things. Right. So she is kind of in awe of that, but she shouldn't because it's been seven years, girly, right. you'll have it too. Just the, it's time yeah. of relationships. So yeah. what are we always saying on the mimosa hotline? everything is connections and conversations. So to me, conferences are just like a little um, incubator to massively mm -hmm. do that and strategically do that. So yeah. um, for me this year, uh, being a seventh year, my goal was to reinforce relationships of past mm -hmm. years, you know, just keep that vibe, keep that current, keep top of mind. Second, I was looking for perfect clients. I don't want to work with everybody. I'm going to say that now. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. I don't want to work with everyone. I am not trying to be everything for everyone. I'm trying to be me for the right few. So looking for those. Then also I know my, and I've reconfirmed this, my business thrives on referrals. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be honest. I don't get many mm -hmm. off of social media, maybe more now that I've been putting an effort into it, but it all comes off of referrals. So why would I waste my time with all this stuff when I just need to covet those things? So referral partners were the final one. And I'm thinking of like, who also serves my client, who might be around my client that they would be like, Hey, go work with Ashley, then come back. Or we could collaborate on things. So that was my goal going into it. Mm -hmm. Um, coming out, I would say I did just that. I definitely, um, I'm very humbled in saying this, but I definitely had everyone knowing my name, everyone. Hey, Ashley, how are you? I haven't seen mm -hmm. you. How's the last year been getting hugs, getting pictures, doing all the fun stuff. Um, I was very excited to say, um, uh, a very, I'm, I'm going to say this cause I think she'll love it if I say it this way, we had a very challenging project through 2020. And while we did incredible work, um, we did the kind of this relationship, you know, where it goes yep. and, puts ways and comes back and we reconnected. And while I thought I wasn't really sure what the relationship would be like, 
she and I both still love each other. We cannot wait to work together again. She was very kind in running around telling, bringing me referrals. Mm -hmm. So here on this one, where I was looking for refer, uh, looking for clients, imagine a client being a referral partner. Mm -hmm. Boom. Like that was like a double whammy for me. Also the last night, um, she, Leilani and I all stayed up to like 3 AM telling our lonely leader stories. Oh, and yeah. it was the most, um, Oh, I don't have words for it. Um, validating, heart opening, truth. Like I really saw her in a whole different way. And I, and I saw things in me and her and she saw things in me and like, just, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Like this is my tribe. Like, okay. Like just phenomenal connection. Yeah. Um, then I, on referral sides, um, I met a project manager. I met a website developer. And um, I also met another OBM, online business manager, that all said, hey, we should talk and, and be strategic partners or referral mm -hmm. partners. And absolutely, let's set up Zooms when we get back. Sure. One that I was so excited about, I actually booked a Zoom call that moment. I was like, hey, we're both going to be really busy. When you get home, I might forget, you might forget, let's just book it now. And it's on the 6th, I believe. We have it scheduled next week. So done. Um, so my goal going in was that, um, and that's what I got out. I will say just to conclude this long winded answer for you. Um, the difference of me this year was discernment mm. and frequency. Uh, what do I mean that discernment, knowing who is an ideal connection, mm -hmm. referral partner or client for me, in the past, I've still been defining that. Now I know. Um, frequency. Um, with no offense to anyone, I just say it this way. I um, have realized my, my high vibe, you know, like my gratitude, my wealth, my success, my things. And um, I feel like I, if I'm at this level, there's definitely mentors, gurus higher than me, but there's also mm -hmm. this lower than me portion of lack and scarcity and fear and unknown. And it was interesting. It kept kind of coming up to me at different points. And I just kind of put up my own little shield. I was like, I'm not here for that. I am not mm -hmm. going to kind of come down to this. And as the community that we're in, we originally met in, they talk mm -hmm. about this. There's pit yeah. people and mountain people. Just to explain for other people, pit people are those that are in the pit. They're kind of in the trenches trying to figure it out. Scarcity, lack. Oh my God, I don't know all these things. Then there's base camp, right? Where they've kind of come out, they made a choice. Okay, I can choose differently. And if yeah. anyone listens to this, like, did you hear what I said? Everything is choice. You can mm -hmm. choose to be in the pit. You can choose to climb, like choose. Yep. Then there's the climbers that are working their way up, which I'm going to say I'm a climber. Like I'm not at the top yet, but I'm working my damn way up. And then there's those that are at the top and they just kind of attract and guide and lead. And those are the mentors and the gurus of the world, not the Tony Robbins, but like, like, for example, Martha Nice, who I mentioned 34 years in business, I believe early seventies wealth of knowledge, experience, and expertise. I didn't necessarily talk to all the speakers, but I talked to her because she has the knowledge I need to know. I mean, duh. Um, so for me, this year was very much frequency. And the first two days I was struggling. I got a lot of pit people. I don't know what, what it was, but I was like, what door do I need to close? Like out, <laughs> like out. Um, and I get that. But then I also was like, you know, one of them, I mentioned to her, she was like, I have no clients. I have no business. I don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, of course not. Like, look at what this is doing. Like, stop it. I was like, reset yourself, get out there meet people, invite them. And I gave her a few ways to network better and, and how to connect with people in the moment and how to schedule follow-up calls. And then at the end of conference, she had, I, I've heard she booked one, uh, I, I want to be careful here because I think I'm saying this right, but she booked two clients and had three Zoom calls scheduled and was still going through it. So it's a possibility to shift yourself that fast, yeah. like get it. Um, but I'm not here for your pity party. I will happily listen to you for like a cup of tea in the morning and hear you out, but I have things to do too. And like, respectfully, you are not on my agenda to make you feel better and get your shit together. Like if I were a coach, I'm also like a pretty stern coach. Like I've coached swimming and athleticism, uh, athleticism, but like water polo swimming, that's what I coached. 
I'm pretty stern. I definitely love on my people, like all my little swimmers, there's days we all need a day that coach is nice to us, but every other day we are there to build our skills and get to the competition day. Like, I don't want to hear about your boyfriend problems or whatever that was was, like that day, you know, those little (laughs) ones, they're cute, you know? I mean, we can have small talk for a few minutes, but definitely. And like, yeah, pool talk, like locker room talk, like all the time. But when we are here, let's do the thing. Like, um, you need to vent, you need to bitch and you need to do your shit. Amen. Let's schedule a call for that. But like right now you're in a Mecca of opportunity. Don't taint that with, you know, Debbie Downer. Right. Not the right thing. So, um, I found a way, um, if I got those people, I would listen very intently. And then I would run into like a crowded place. And then I was like, Oh my God. You know, um, what would I say? I would say something to the effect of like, because you remember that thing we talk about, about how people confide in us, like all the details at the airport and wherever, like, I want to hold space that you're confiding in me. And I, it's an honor for me to be that for you, but in the right time and place. So I would say something to the effect of being like, you know, thank you so much for sharing. I feel really honored that you would share this with me. Um, I have a connection I've got to make, but can we make time? And I was serious. Like we either wrote it on the calendar. Or can I meet you at the happy hour after or I would separate that time. And then I'd like run into a little crowd and find someone and talk to them because. Yeah. I'm happy to be here if you ask for that time, but otherwise as impasse that really, I must say it fucks with our energy mm-hmm. and I don't have time for that. Because well, it's time for me to regroup and recalibrate and all that shit. Yeah. Well, and you're in a situation that's not really conducive to that. Yeah. You know, Are like, you... it's not like you're in a one-on-one, you know, you ran into them at the coffee shop, like you're Absolutely. at a conference, you know, like, yeah, it, and... that sometimes makes a big difference too, is the environment that you're in. And I wanted to, I was actually going to ask my therapist because I think she's a perfect person to ask this, but like how do you have an honor? Um, like, what was my question? I wrote it down, but it was something to the effect of like, how can you be someone's um, secret keeper and not their therapist? Right. It's tough. And I mean, girl, let's, let's be honest. You, I, you and I have that. And I loved you the day you were like, okay, enough time for therapy. And I was like, absolutely. And I called <laughs> both like, absolutely. Like there is a place for this. And when our, when our low vibes get to high capacity, that's when we call in somebody like a therapist and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, that's their specialty. That's how they help right. you get out of that and back up here. Like I'm yeah. in it. I have no judgment on this. Like it's a thing, but yeah. I, I think it's hard because my work specifically requires that I see into you and I'm going to see all of it without judgment. And I think that's a new feel for people when they meet mm. somebody that sees all of them and doesn't mm-hmm. judge them. They kind of get this, um, little love cords. I don't, I don't know any other way to say it though. Like that's intimate. That's a moment to be with somebody. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, it's a privilege. It's an honor. I, I appreciate it, but even everything has boundaries in life, yeah, right? There's so, a time and place for, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. And I do know I had, two, uh, I'd say three, I had three people that I literally had to invoke my confidentiality policy with what they were sharing with me. Like, um, it, yeah. you know, it's also an interesting thing. Cause it's a reminder to me that n- not everything is Instagram life. <laughs> There's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes that a yeah. lot of us don't talk about or don't know about. And it was a good, um, you're seeing the best of everybody. Yeah. And it was just that, a very like, good reminder that, you know, yeah. these powerhouse lonely leaders that I bonded with are powerful because of the shit they're going through and like, bravo. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you, we get on social media because it's easy. It's accessible. That's what we have in front of us every day, but that what you're seeing is curated by that person. You're only seeing the best of them. And so Uh I think that we get into this mindset of seeing somebody's best because they're, they're guiding the narrative, their narrative. Right. And 
then we get into judgment on our own selves of comparing kind of you talking about Leilani and her being in all of your seven years and her only being two. She is comparing her chapter one to your chapter 20. So, and so in our brains, it's kind of like this mental mind fuck of like, I don't quite, my brain can't comprehend that time frame of time of you've paid your dues for seven years, as mm-hmm. opposed to only being in year two. And like, it, it just, it's hard for our brains to like take yeah. time in that regard. And so it's, I mean, we do it a lot on social media, like, Absolutely. cause it's the best, we see the best of everybody. Yeah. And I, I was really, you can't take away someone's journey. They have to learn it on their own. Like you can mm-hmm. tell them as much as you want. Like these are the things they're going to hit, but you know, and especially with Leilani, she, one of my favorite qualities about her is she's so open, um, mm-hmm. in the sense of like advice. Like if you give her advice, she honestly listens. Now maybe she'll take it or not, but she's receptive to it. And mm-hmm. I always try and preface with her, um, she's more successful than I am right now. Like revenue wise, definitely more successful than I am. She hit her first two years way more successful than I was in my business. So to give her context, you know, like don't, you know, this is just my journey. It's for you to take the parts that are relevant to you, but also some of the things that I was very grateful. I was seven years ahead because I could kind of help her in a moment that I was like, "Mm." one was association. Um, one of the qualities I absolutely love about Leilani is she loves everybody, everybody from drugged out bums to high performing speaker. She loves you all, everybody. She just, she is a ball of love. If she were a care bear, it would make sense to me. Okay. Like she just (laughs) shoots out love. Um, But there was a, you know, in every situation, right? In all things, there was a small group that was just excessively rowdy. Every night they're closing out the bar, they're drinking, they had a bloody dance party in the lobby the last night and things that time and place, right? Like I am the first one and I'm not going to out myself of how wild and crazy I am, but I'm, I know how to do this. Like I can, I got my own stories for all of you. Someday you'll never hear them promise. Anywho, time and place. Yeah. Right. Like time and place. And I, um, there were a few that were just getting some side eye from all of us veterans being like, this is not the image that you carry because also while we're there, we are representing e-women network. Like, duh, duh. There are other people in this hotel. There are staff. There are people that will talk about you or take pictures and do things. And I just, I, I tried in my most unjudgmental and whatever way to just be like, watch yourself. Like the person that everyone is talking about right now, you being nice to them is actually hurting you. It's making you tainted by that image and that association. She's like, oh, I'm not really sure. Well, she actually had a, um, what would you call that? Industry vendor partner. So she's in the world of insurance. And so it was like one of the um, brokers-ish persons Mm -hmm. there. So they work on projects together. And um, it was very clear that this person was starting to wonder if she should, you know, take Leilani for all the things. And I had a conversation with her and then cleared the air on things. And then I told Leilani, I was like, you need to go have a conversation here because your association is tainting what you've built as a relationship. Mm. And she was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I I was like, I'm not trying to be older, wiser, whatever. I'm just telling you, like, I, if, if that were me, I would want to know, like, go talk. And she was came back later saying, you were right. Thank you so much. I cleared the air noted. And I'm like, cool. Like, I'm not trying to keep anyone on the outs. I'm not trying to talk dirty about people, but here's the thing as a brander, (laughs) you're not the only element of your brand, your environment, the people you associate with the clients you hold all these things. Ah, that's such a good thing. I was watching this new, have you seen, um, oh, it's so good. Uh, partner track no partner track it's about a law firm and a girl trying to make partner in the law uh-uh. firm oh mm-hmm. my gosh well everybody you got to watch it it's on netflix really cute really fun very intellectual i love it sapiosexual awesomeness mm-hmm. um and in one of the episodes they talk about how 
they are selective of their client base and almost make it like um, an index of investments. Like they're very choosy in who they work with. And that just kind of stood out to me because that's kind of a thing. Like, you know, um, we're not all PR agencies trying to cover up messes. Like (laughs) some of us just need to keep a standard. And uh, it was an interesting moment though, because that's a sensitive topic to talk about. And like, you're not trying to exclude anyone. You're not trying to say anything, but here's the deal. Your actions are on me. And I was sharing this with her too, as a brand strategist, I feel my actions represent every one of the clients I've ever worked with. I feel that way. Now, maybe not everybody does, and maybe that's not a value you hold, but when I'm out and I'm about I feel like I'm representing myself, my family, you guys, everybody. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all interconnected. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I love the people that are like, well, I went out in my pajamas and I didn't see anyone. Well, who saw you? (laughs) I mean, it's a thing. And I'm not saying that we have to be perfect all the time. Of course, we're going to yeah. be sweaty little rats when we get out of the gym, but time and place, you should look like a mess when you come right. out of the gym. Like it's weird when they've got like mascara and are perfect. I'm like, what you do? <laughs> yeah. what Did like, you actually work out? Because I don't look like that when I'm done. No, and tell me, tell me your ways. Cause I, <laughs> right. I want to, like, if, if that's the case, I want to know what the secret is. <laughs> absolutely. Like I want to know. <gasps> Oh, yeah, yeah so I look like those, a drowned rat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I swim. I'm literally, I drown. Oh, out. I <laughs> only, I mean, I'm only dancing. I still come out looking like yeah, a drowned right? rat. I mean, oh like, so to that effect, that was the breadth of it. You know, it's my seventh year, um, my strategy going in and coming out, kind of my takeaways. Um, I feel really good about the relationships because everything is connections and conversations. So now Mm -hmm. I'm letting the magic kind of sit and let people remember conversations we had or connect with them. So I did, um, to most everyone, I made sure that I either sent a note via Facebook messenger, like it was Mm -hmm. a pleasure to meet you with something personal that I remembered about them, or to be very honest, the ones I really loved and connected with, I sent a voice note. I just Mm -hmm. think it's even more personal than a little text or whatever. Um, and then the other ones I'm scheduling meetings with and I'm talking to. Yeah. So um, that's all I can do. And so, and I'm not going to lie, that didn't feel enough. But yet at the same time, I know it's enough. Like that's the battle in my head was like, did I do enough? You know, and part of you is thinking revenue and profit and like uh-huh. making clients and all of this. But that comes from being you, being an expert, being in the room at the right place and allowing the rest to happen, you know, yeah. like. I don't want to be hungry about it. I, I trust yeah. that I made the connections I needed to make the people feel ready and they're doing what they need to do. And they'll call me. They'll call me. Yeah. Well, I too, I think it's a social pressure of being in the hustle culture of, oh my God. I you know, yeah. I should have done more while I was there when that, when in actuality, you, you did exactly what you Absolutely. were supposed to do, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, and I mean, I've, probably told you this before, but I've said it to a lot of people, like you can only control your actions. You can't control the outcome. Oh, we got to hear that again and again and again and again. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) don't, don't we all like, I mean, your your actions, not other people's. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, I can't control somebody saying yes to me for a project and landing a sale. Like all I can control is my actions going into it. I can't control what they're going to say. Um, you know, and it's the same Mm -hmm. concept. You can only control what you go in to accomplish, not the outcome. Yeah. And I, um, I would say first day I let my like goals of like the outcome kind of be strong on me. And I was like, you got to knock this off because that's the thing every year I know. And I was telling people this too, like day one, day two, I was like, every year I know I make the most synergistic, perfect connections that end up lasting about the next year or so. And for referrals, for clients, the whole thing, like it happens. Yeah. Um, but if you control it and try, you'll kind of cock block it. Sorry for uh-huh. lack of better terms. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, is it not yeah. like, nope, that's what it is. exactly like, what it is. <laughs> I just heard my mom, ladies don't speak like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did. I um, I'm but- not a lady then. Yeah, I, she, I know. I'm never ready for the tea room. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, it's interesting. Um 
but that was it. So once I kind of re- just, you know, the first day I'm intentional and I'm all into it. And then I just like, let it be. And then I just kind of relaxed into it. And then I definitely found my people. Like I said, you know, I kind of had a little bit of this pit people action in the beginning. And then I was like, I need to find my frequency and my vibe. And I kind of just waited back a little, found this past client. We really bonded. Then we started attracting more. And by the last night, we actually were doing, and I, I, I'm going to keep this to us, but we were doing a conference recap of what we liked, what we didn't, what we wanted yeah. differently. Mm-hmm. And we actually came up with this concept of an anti-conference, the things that we didn't like, you know, putting together a small group, we planned it out in Chicago. There's going to be an Airbnb, probably five, six bedrooms. We'll all get together and do a lonely leader gathering instead of just the parts we really liked, but would have liked more of in that capacity, but Mm -hmm. you can't do that at a conference level. So it's not saying anything, but, um, that was a really interesting conversation too. Yeah. You're with you. I'm just going to say these things. I don't know why I'm hesitating to say this, but when you're with your people, your frequency, your vibe shit happens. And it was just really interesting to see that five days in the making, I found them. I found them. Um, and that's because I was discerning. I wasn't trying to be for everybody. I was definitely the whole conversation, the whole time. Um, here was my number one takeaway from this conference. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I am not judgmental. I'm instinctual. I listen to my gut. It's Mm. nothing personal. I just am a freak when it comes to reading people. I can profile somebody so fast. Um, It's experience. I'm not judgmental. It's just, I'm very intuitive and I know, and I can quickly be like, no, no, no. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Again, it's just instinct. But when I, 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 first couple of days, I felt like a very judgmental person. Like, God, Ashley, who the hell are you? Like, you need to be nicer. And then it came through the the stage and some other people. And I got that line. Um, I believe it was Kim. It came partly from Kim Yancey, the husband of the uh, husband and wife duo. Mm-hmm. And he said something to the effect of like, listen to your instincts. And I was like, oh, that's it. I'm not judgmental. I am instinctual. Yeah. You know what I'm going to play up to that because I'm not wrong. And I have been tortured in my life being, you're a know-it-all, you think all this, that's old life. Um, I've closed that chapter. Now I'm just really instinctual. Yeah. I can normally tell within the first like quick introduction of like, I can summarize who this person is just like by listening to what they're saying and and instinctually like listening to my intuition going, I, okay. I got your number. I, I, I know now because I know who you are now. I know how I need to react to mm-hmm. it. Um, and it, I mean, it only takes a quick introduction of the one question, what do you do? And then I, from that response, I can tell you exactly where, which bucket you fall in. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? And you know what? I hope you do it to me too. I don't want to be in there just to be in there. If I'm yeah. right for you, I'm right for you. Not, yeah. No, thank you. Because we're wasting each other's time on this. Like, let's love everybody. Like, no, I don't. And I'm learning more and more. um, Leaders are polarizing. We're not insulting. Mm -hmm. We're just right for the right people and wrong for the wrong people. Like, that's okay. I feel like, you know, it, it does kind of remind me of my mom in the tea room. So I was raised with tea room etiquette and I'm not kidding about this. So when I was really little, um, Jacksonville, Oregon, of all places, small town, like literally, I think it's 10 steps to get from one side to the other. Not joking. Um, they had high tea Mm -hmm. and in order to teach me manners and grooming and whatnot, and how to be a lady, uh, my mom took me to high tea. Now I'm very blessed that I have that experience because there's many times that I need to know, you know, outside in and manners and all the Mm -hmm. things on things. However, um, even there, you know, like you say in the South, bless your heart doesn't actually mean that. And then things like, you know, um, have a courtesy smile. Yeah. Secretly, I know. If, I I, if I do one of these, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, you're so great. I, I invoked that the first night. It was interesting. Uh, we had, uh, we went to the best restaurant. It's called um, Asian Mint. It's one of Nikki. I'm spacing her last name right now, but one of our members owns multiple restaurants and they're Thai food. And it's, 
exquisite, exquisite food. And the woman that was sitting across from me, she just rubbed me all the wrong ways. Well, she's the one that was starting the dance party night five. Oh, okay. And I, I'm just sitting there like, not judgmental. I'm just instinctual. I said that one. And then that was also, you know, all the things. So it was like, yeah, pr like prove me wrong. Like if ever I miss yeah. judge you and like out of multiple interactions, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I didn't get that the first time, but usually not. Yeah. <laughs> Those are very, out. yeah. They're few and far between for me too. Yeah. Most of the time, my, my first gut impression instinct is generally. Yeah. Spot and I think we need to listen to that more. I think a lot of us, especially leaders, I find we all have one of our little demons is people pleasing. Mm -hmm. We want to like everyone. We want to do all this thing, but like, yeah. Okay. Well, and I, I think the, the people that I might misjudge sometimes not and judge is a really wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. word, but for lack of better term, how about that? Misinterpret. Misinterpret. It's the people that are quiet. Uh, right? So they don't say a lot and they're quiet and lots of quiet people get stereotyped as snotty or snobbish when in mm -hmm. actuality, they're just listening, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? So sometimes those people are a little hard for me to judge because yeah. they're just a little too quiet. And I probably also fall in that bucket. Yeah. Some I, um... in like a networking situation. You know, it's interesting you say that specific archetype because now those are the ones I go after because mm -hmm. they don't need to speak. They listen. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that those are those people that know the most that don't, mm -hmm. speak, which I'm definitely not playing that up right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was interesting. I was at my, um, Shamika Tankerson, who I'm coaching with, we went to a private dinner and um, exquisite. And it was interesting. I was very quiet because I chose to be very quiet because mm -hmm. don't know these women that closely. Uh, we're mm -hmm. all in the same community and that's great. But in this environment, um, they were reading me. They were very much dissecting me. Who's this one? How she get at the table? Like da da da. And mm -hmm. then one of the women at the table <laughs> was just there to say, I don't know, 20 years ago, she lived in Chicago and all the bad things about it. And da, 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 And at the end, I just, slight courtesy smile, cause I couldn't even make the full one. At the end, I said, even with all the negatives that you shared with me, I still can't wait to be there. <laughs> yeah. But she always, <laughs> she was also the one that probably didn't shut up. No, the whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, girl. I mean, yeah. But it was an interesting thing because the rest, I really was able to just kind of watch how my mentor engages in the environment and engages with her mm. people. The, uh, the one on this side, I loved this one was another uh, coach in the community. She's the CFO that we all talked to. Both of these women were nominated for made it to a million. So I'm sitting at a great table right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, I am happy to be the quiet one that you feel like you didn't get to know enough or curious what was going on because you're mm -hmm. going to call me <laughs> mm -hmm. and chatty Kathy, no one is calling you. Yep. At all. Yeah. Like, gross. well, and I, I mean, in networking situations, I always find people in general, people really are there to only talk about themselves. So I let them. Mm -hmm. and that's then how I like weed out who's mm -hmm. for me and who's not right, right? like yeah. you know yeah. so I mean because you think about mm -hmm. it you you go into a room of 100 people and you read the meet room somebody you do yeah you you meet people like you do the whole, whole like I'm Ronnie like what do you do blah 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 and I instantly I, I can tell you probably 90 percent of the people I'll meet I ask them what they do. I always have to be the first one to ask, what do you do? And they just start. And they, by the time we're done, they've never once asked me what I do. No, no. And that's how I weed them out. Like, yeah, that's, a, that's interesting because the advice I gave to the one woman day one, uh, who was concerned about where her business was at. I was like, I'm in the same boat girl. Like I just finished all my projects. We're like actresses. Every time you finish a movie, you're unemployed. And then you book yeah. the next movie, like yeah. chill. It's part of this. Like you're fine. Yeah, um, yeah. 
And I told her, I said, you know, you're pushing your card, you're asking all of these. So she's a health coach. So all these intimate questions about her health, your health, they're not here at this conference wanting to talk about their diabetes, their sugar intake, their this, that, whatever. I was like, you need to bond on a different level. And I said, start asking open-ended questions, ask them what they do. What's their lifestyle? Like, what is this? And kind of bond with them on that. They will tell you their problems naturally. It yeah. will be there. And schedule schedule a time later to connect after the conference, because that should be your first intention to connect. And then if you see or hear signs, schedule another client conversation about the work that you could provide them, but don't try and be out here like a salesy weirdo yep. pushing your super restrictive, whatever is all over them. Nobody wants yeah. that. Like no. stop it. Yeah. Um, and I do believe that's why she was able to, you know, change her week and get the results she had. And yeah. I'm not saying it's by me. It's just what I've learned and what works. So mm -hmm. take me out of it, but just that process strategy mm -hmm. works. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting event, but, um, all in all my highs were, <sighs> I was so blessed this year by the, the, the people, the women that I did meet, we had like these little moments, like, um, my past client and I had multiple ones in the lobby where we would run away from the conference and just be like, oh my gosh, what are you thinking right now? And just have talks between ourselves, brainstorm ideas. Another woman I literally met like, okay, if this makes sense, it's an embassy suite. So it's like that mm -hmm. big tower in the center. Yeah. And we were kind of going in between the lobby and the breakfast area. So there's a little like a overpass kind of thing. And we were underneath that and we had the best conversation. We talked about everything, <laughs> everything. everything. <laughs> anyway, all things, talking about all the things. Yeah. And from personal to being women, to being business owners, to her idea that she came into conference thinking she was crazy. And we all validated it's the best way go with that, with your business. Then another one, um, we were in the afterglow in the uh, bar area. And she's like, I have a bottle of wine in my room. We don't have to pay for that. You want to walk up and get a glass? I was like, absolutely. So when we walk up there, she and I have a heart to heart. She and I are both crying. It was amazing. We come back downstairs. We join the group. Like all the little breakaways I mm -hmm. had was it for me. Those are the mm -hmm. little magic moments that no matter what you set as an intention going in, you can't really control or anticipate they just happen and that that's yeah. what I took away this year and then the best part was rooming with Leilani too we got to do nightcaps and what was how was your day who'd you yeah. meet what'd you do she closed I'm so proud of her a year-long retainer client renewed nice. with her she went out off property to meet them and have dinner with them and then another uh big 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 client she closed none of that really happened with the conference it was just her pre-work that she was able to set up while she was in town mm -hmm. i mean bravo like yeah you can make it however you want and then she was able to bond with that um strategic partner she had during the event she also met a lot of other um potential leads and clients and things. And I remember last year she went saying she was a VA and now she's owning that she's an OBM. So for people that don't mm -hmm. know, a virtual assistant is kind of a tasker. They just do the tasks that you assign. And an OBM mm -hmm. has almost controller operations capability. Mm -hmm. They set up systems. They're way more um, invested in businesses. And mm -hmm. to see her kind of own her geniusness, that made me proud. I was like, get it, girl. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting, but. So yeah, it was, um, it was worth it and still getting my voice back. But again, like this talking for an hour, I've been talking, 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 talking. So it's funny when I'm not on, um, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I, I, I really haven't spoken the last two days. I, I, I pretty much self-diagnosed. I tested, I'm negative for COVID, but I self-diagnosed. I had laryngitis. Um, I don't know. There's something about laryngitis that's really unique your uh vocal cords are dry so it's not like having uh -huh. a dry throat but it's just dry in your throat if that makes sense uh -huh. and i was like oh i have laryngitis and the thing is you don't talk lots of hot liquids and whatever and it was funny um wake up in the morning no voice don't talk all day i had a little bit of a voice and i was like okay this is what i have but yeah um, <laughs> i haven't said mm. yeah <laughs> i was even worried leaving the voice notes for people that it was like hello <laughs> Well, when I talked to you earlier in the week and you were real raspy like that, this is partly just because it's my age, but I was always like, I'm the generation of friends, like the okay. sitcom. 
and uh, Phoebe one time got sick and she, so she was a singer and she had that like sexy raspy voice. And so then she, when she got better, she was like, oh my God, I want it back because it was, you know, so sexy. It was just, it was a funny episode. She's like sang her stinky cat song, which was hilarious. I mean, it was just a funny episode, but when I heard, when I heard your voice, I was like, this reminds me of the Phoebe episode. (laughs) I definitely feel more sultry when I have it. I'm like, like, listen to me. I don't think I have like a squeaky voice, but it definitely sounds different for sure. Um, and it's just a strain that's, that's, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it's a little harder. (laughs) I get it. I I get it too. I mean, I, I was only two hours at a networking event and came home that way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It was, it was real bad on what we, we flew home Sunday. It was really bad. Um, it was bad. I didn't have, I have one of those voices. It's easy for me to lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, is. Yeah. Yeah. But. I'm just doing lots of tea in the um, halls, you know, just yeah. the throat things that's mm-hmm. working for me. But you know, when I knew I, it was laryngitis and nothing else. We had the most exquisite dinner. Violetta Croc, Leilani Filipinko, and myself all went out the last night, um, right before the dance party, to this beautiful sushi uh, dinner downtown. And we were, uh, we ordered, oh my God, I ordered so much. I'm pretty embarrassed, but I think my tab was like $100. <laughs> like sushi. That's a lot of sushi. So I had um, miso soup, the salad, uh, sushi, fried rice, and then this drink of bliss. It was, um, uh, watermelon something. Oh my meow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bathe me in that. Anywho. Um, when I got to the miso soup and I sipped it, my voice came back completely. And I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, that's interesting. So then mm-hmm. that's when I was like, okay, I'm not worried. This is not COVID, but unfortunately yeah. you be warned people. I want to just end on this unfortunate note. I know of like probably now seven people that came home positive with COVID. So yeah. it's still out there. Um, this is not a plug for vaccines or anything. Just be careful with yourselves. You know, when you're, mm-hmm. when you've exposed, like go do you, like I didn't wear a mask all week long. I own it. I did not. Um, I am vaccinated, but I wore a mask on the plane there, even though it's not required. And I wore a mask halfway on the way back. Um, because just because you took a risk doesn't mean you have to expose everyone else around you. So be mindful. Yeah. Please. Yeah. My, there was a Zumba conference week before last and all my Zumba instructors went to and came back and then we didn't have classes for a week because everybody came back with COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, our photographer went down, um, uh, Tammy and our chapter went down. She's got it. Uh, who cares? A bunch of them have it. And that yeah, is it's interesting just, cause like I hugged them. I was is. there with all of them. So I don't know what made me lucky, but, um, yeah, it, it is what thing. it is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you have it, it feel better. <laughs> yeah. Not fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely not fun. Nobody wants to be sick with anything. No, <laughs> like I don't even want to sign his infection. No, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I have things to do, people to meet, it's things exactly. to say, and all the things. But yeah, well, I'm glad it was good. Yeah, thanks. It was. It was good. I'm excited. I, someone just called me. I don't know if you saw me in that as fast as I could, but um, uh, now I'm excited for the relationships. Um, I know right. that sounds maybe weird, but that's my favorite part. I've made some really incredible connections of wise women doing incredible things that I can learn so much from and the power of connection builds referral actually Mm -hmm. side note I want to give somebody a shout out best card I saw there I was like yes okay who is this I'm a sucker for good business cards um Kayla Vaughn Middleton, Medicare boss lady. Here is her card, everyone. My favorite part though, right here on the back, it says the referral of your friends and family is the greatest compliment you can give me. Thank you for your trust. Jeez. I'm going to be adding something like that somewhere. I think I'm going to put it into my email footer. Um, Yeah signature there's not a foot meow <laughs> I, I knew what you meant <laughs> thank you my the email signature um I love that though and and what a polite way to just encourage it um I liked that my dad used to use these um I hate the font but don't judge it just says I heart referrals and they were little oh. stickers but ugh, I hate the font anyways <sighs> I will redesign something like that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, bravo. This would be the card that I would shout out. She is a Medicare um, consul- Medicare broker, licensed and independent agent and mm. just beautiful human. But that's who I would shout out. Um, the other one that was really kind of fun to see was Violetta Croc. Um, if everyone can see this, mm-hmm. the lighting, oh, it's a little bit 
interesting. But the mm. reason I'm so proud of this is this is one of my clients that mm. uh, we work together to so to see our work in tangible. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, yeah. So it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, so many fun things. Um, lots of cards. So yeah. But um, this, I think business cards are like the most underrated marketing tool you can have. I know we're going over time, but can we talk about that for like two seconds? Love Um, a good business card. It's got to feel good. Yeah. And like thickness matters. Um, uh, (laughs) That's what she said. (laughs) Only here, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. I said it. Thickness matters. I thought it though. (laughs) In business cards. Where have you been? Oh my goodness. (laughs) Sorry. (sighs) It was so good. It's true. Anyhow. Anyway. Time and place, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you made it this far and you got that. And you're you're welcome. You're, because you're matters. one of our people. Yeah, I, I actually had people taking my cards. I should grab one. Um, they're like coaster thick and they're like, damn, Ashley. And I was like, damn. Let's work. I like the cards that have that like velvety feel to them. Yeah. Or um, I know that they're not easy to write on and people get mad at me because they're like, I can't write on your card. And I'm like, yeah, but it feels great. Don't it? (laughs) I like feel it. Feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a very tactile person. (laughs) I love it. Um, you know what? I actually came home, um, with a strong opinion. I hate QR codes. Oh, So a few people had, um, digital business cards where like you QR and then it adds it to your contacts. Do you Mm -hmm. know how many people I lost? Because I've got a hundred people on my phone contacts. I don't remember who they were. I had to go. As soon as the person would give me the QR, I screenshotted it, but there were three people. I would have lost you. I wouldn't know. You didn't come home in my yes baggie. Mm. Now you're out. And I'm like, oh my God, I really hate this. I don't mind if you have a QR code on a business card, but don't lose that. And I get it. Printing costs, meow, 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 meow. But I don't know about that. I, as a brander, I was like, you lost me. You like, and I'm a brand I'm here. Like, I, I forgot who you are. Like, who, who are you in my contacts? Mm-hmm. Like who? I, I didn't mm-hmm. like that. Um, I, I could argue either side of it. Yeah. On the card though, if you have like a QR on the card and then I can book or something fine, but Um, The other thing I was shocked, how many people don't have a phone and email on their card, let alone I go to your website and on the contact page, there's no phone number to call you. People don't want to talk to people. (laughs) Remember, you want to make it easy for people to contact you. And if you just sat there and said, well, I don't want people to have my cell phone number. Do you not want clients? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. I went to like, a couple websites and I go to the contact and all they have is the form to fill out on the site. Dude, I'm no, I'm not, I don't want even want to book a zoom connection call with you. Come on. So make it easy for people to contact you, make it easy for people to buy, make it easy for people to book with you. You know, I think you should have all three, have all of your contact information, have buy buttons and have scheduling buttons. If you don't have that, what you doing? My, I mean, yeah, I mean, my thing with QR codes is as a designer, I hate the way they look on things. They look alien to me. Do they look alien to you? Terrible. But as a marketer, I love them because now I can track the analytics on them. So I kind of am like, I pull it both ways because as a designer, I hate them. But as a marketing person, I like being able to get that data. Fine. No, it's terrible. (laughs) I, I, you know what? I'm 80, 20, I'm 80% hate 20% fine. I mean, if you need that data to me, booking clients is the data. I don't care how many people clicked on it. It's like, I heard this the other day um, on the show too. Like just because you have a thousand followers doesn't mean you have any clients. Those people aren't buying. They're just liking. So I don't care how many people clicked on it. I want to actually, I had a, I had to have a conversation with a, a client yesterday with I guess former client that always tends to come back around um and uh they had left me to go to another marketing agency that built a WordPress site that in five years has never gotten finished and now they're wanting to reactivate my site that I built for them on Squarespace like a whole big thing Um, that's called a refugee people when you go yeah I work with other people (laughs) we gotta fix it yep so I they're like calling me to fix it now um but uh 
we were talking about another like um like product line for them she, she wants to design t-shirts and like have you know physical apparel nice. products which is great i mean i think she's trying to scratch her creative itch in that um and she she said to me um you know she's given me like the whole spiel about it and she was like well what do you think do you think i should do it and i'm like I'm not here to tell you if you should do it or not. Like, that's not my job. My, what I'm going to tell you is you need to set realistic expectations as to what you can do. Um, and you, then she gets into, well, I have 2 million followers on TikTok. And even if 1% of those convert and I'm like, they're just followers. And I'm, I'll be surprised if 1% actually convert. Good luck. Yeah. Try it. You're not going to know until you try. But yeah. back to I your, know. they're just yeah. followers, not buyers. I'm like, yeah, you have 2 million people on TikTok. Great. Yeah. Convert them. Uh -huh. That's the hard part. I like knowing my followers. You know, I think I have what, 600 or so people, but I know them. Like I, I pretty much know them. It was interesting from this conference. A lot of people, I got friend requests because of associations, you know, like six people connected with or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, mutually connected with. Um, I still go to your profile and I look at you and I'm like, mm -hmm. do I want to know you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, thinking about that. So I just, so today's the first, so today is my monthly reporting day for the previous month. Right. Um, and so I look at all of these analytics and social media is one of those things. And I have this one client that they're, they're following grows very steadily every month. Um, you know, and they get into the headspace of, I only have 750 followers and I'm like, correct. That doesn't seem like a big number, but your engagement rate is 25%, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, that's the important number, not yeah. the actual number of followers. Yeah. Like of those followers, 25% of them are engaged. On average, you're, most people only get like 2% being actually that's engaged. Right. So sure, we could increase the number of followers, which increases the engagement, but then you start to lose that percentage of engagement. Like now it's now down to 20% instead of 25, mm -hmm. you know, like that's the number to look at Absolutely. is the, you know, the engagement rate. Like what's the percentage of that? Like yeah. what's the conversion rate on that? You're better off getting 2% of a hundred people than 2% of a million people. I'm mad at our world that they teach the opposite of list building and quality vanity metrics quality it's so hard yeah. for me to say it backwards because i'm quality <laughs> like i yeah. can't i can't even i'm like quantity the quantity people you know yeah. and there's a business for that in the 999 space and good on you if yeah. that's the value well, you have. but and mm -hmm. i mean in the case of this client that i talked with this week for her, two million followers is a big deal because her real goal in life, she wants, she will not. This is where I get a little like, I want to just choke her. Sometimes is she <laughs> won't admit to what she actually wants. Right? Mm. She says, "I want a business, and I want to run a business, and I want to be an entrepreneur." But when you really sit down and talk with her, and you ask her, she just wants to be famous. Oof. And two million followers makes her famous. And now she's really hit her goal. So she'll never, she's, so then she complains about making money because oh. that's not really what fulfills her. Like she wants to be famous. And I just, I'm like, I just need you to admit that's what you want. <laughs> like you've it achieved that goal me. then. Absolutely. It reminds me of an athletics. You got to love practice more than competition. Right. Because there's so much more practice. I mean, literally how many months and months do we go to practice, you know, four, six hours a day. And then we compete my events. My longest event, I was trying to get under five minutes, five minutes. So like that was the goal, 20 laps under five minutes. Like, do you understand? <laughs> like, huh? That is a blink when it comes to the months yeah. and months and months and months of swimming and practicing and weightlifting exactly. and eating right. And oh my God, steak and eggs for breakfast. Oh my meow. That was a lot. Um, but yeah, yeah, so. I think people, you know, and I get caught up in that too. You know, mm -hmm. I just want to do I the do work. Too. I want to. Yeah create the the brands and do the work but you know what you get That's distracted by all of that yeah. of lead gen and con connections and conversations and invoicing and sales and paperwork and follow-up and gift giving and which by the way is also my favorite but um it's a part of it right there's yeah. all this other stuff so yeah i think um yeah hmm. so on that note well, now that we're a half hour over almost not my fault you're fun to talk to it's your fault <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what we do. I'm I know. not great. You're great. I know. <laughs>
Um, yeah, show notes will recap everything. If anyone watched this this to this point, like you should hop on our complimentary yes. calls because like, we would just, like to love on you more. Yeah, if Dang. you've made it this far, just like let us know because we'll just have you on. Like yeah. we don't even have to like, hot see you. Like, you, whatever you want. We'll do like whatever you need in reason. <laughs> reason. Well, um, and even those can be bought. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so hopefully to summarize all of this in a show recap, um, we will recap this for you in the post so that you can get to the points that you want to focus on. Uh, yeah. Remember that uh, Ronnie and I both offer complimentary sessions where you can just yeah. hop on a call with us and ask in private, you know, what are those things, challenges, struggles, I'm thinking of, what do you think of this? And we're here to help you. We also offer a hot seat, which I would like to rename because I think it might be keeping people out. They think that we're gonna like burn them or something on the hot seat, but um, it's just 20 minutes for us to love into you and share our experience, our expertise and our knowledge with you. So um, about what they do. Yeah, learn about what you do, how we can support you. And it doesn't yeah. have to be something wrong. Maybe it's a launch you have, or you're excited about something yeah. like, it's just an opportunity to get on and showcase and say, hey, so we have that for you. Um, final thoughts? Just I, it, my final thought is like, this is the same conversation we have every week, just about when it comes down to how you really grow your business. Same topic every week. Really? Connections, Connection. conversation, <laughs> conversion, <laughs> you know, really? like. Yeah. Literally every single week comes back around to this. Yeah. And if you're doing it a different way, let us know. But I don't yeah, think if something else is working know. for you, I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you can convert 1% of your 2 million followers on TikTok to a client, I want to know how you do that. <laughs> Yeah, I was excited. You'd be proud of me. I was looking at my uh, conversions of things and my newsletter that I have on my website. It has um, a freebie attached, a little three-part video, 70% open rate. Nice. Oh, that's pretty. That's and really like, good. Yeah. And then my well, monthly newsletter that goes out is at 35%. That's good. Like, this is nice because on yeah. average it's like 10, 12%. So oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that was something else I wanted to spotlight and share just that I have that going out monthly. If anyone's interested in getting a little love into your inbox. Stay yeah. And if you want my free marketing calculator, just jump on the site and go grab it. Get it, get it, get it. All That's right. All there is to it. I think we'll end on that note. Yep. Um, we will see you next Thursday, every Thursday, unless one of us is out of town or something comes up, we are here to support you. So brand strategy, business strategy, life strategy. Um, we're here. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>